What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And before we dive into the subject of the video, just a couple of programming notes to inform you guys about. Now Treeb Talks uploads will now be a little later in the day, around 7 o'clock, 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. Because I got a new job, I'm getting off a little earlier and I will be at work a lot a little bit longer so the hours are changing so the upload times are going to be changing as well uh, but we are still currently at the two jobs that I'm at right now so there will be a couple of two o'clock uploads but just to get you guys used to it I decided to drop the video at this time just again so you get a little bit more accustomed to it and you guys seem to like the uh, late night uploads a little bit more than the uh, midday upload so that's Awesome, but today, ladies and gentlemen, what we are talking about is the 2019 NFL Draft and what it was for the Jacksonville Jaguars. There were some steals early on in the draft. There were some questionable picks in there as well, and we selected a man that I hope grabs the franchise by the horns and runs with it. So what I'm going to be doing, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going round by round, pick by pick, grading each pick for the Jaguars 2019 draft class, and then at the end, giving an overall grade. For this draft class. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jaguars 2019 NFL Draft Class Grades. Hit that intro. One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, four down. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treve from Treve Talks here for another episode of Treve Talks. So let us start off, obviously, with the first round selection of Josh Allen. Now, when this first happened, for some reason, some Jags fans were all up in their feelings about it, but I don't understand why. I don't know why you would be all up in the, your feelings about it when this guy was probably the best player in the draft. Personally, looking at film, I would say he's better than Nick Bosa. You know, he had the SEC, uh, led the SEC in sacks this year with 17. And, you know, he just he's a great guy, brings a lot of good morale. You know, he's a hard worker as well. And, uh, you know, he said that in his introductory uh, press conference, talked about how much hard work uh, that how much he values hard work and how much you know he wanted to be here he wanted to be with Saxonville because this is Saxonville and for a defensive lineman or a pass rusher in general this is the ideal spot that you want to play in and I know and I understand that maybe at the time you guys wanted a tight end maybe at the time you wanted a receiver or something like that but from then and there, with what the Jags were handed and on the draft board with Josh Allen still there, that was a terrific selection, a huge steal. It reminds me a lot of 2016. A lot of people have been saying that now. It's kind of like the 2016 draft. You know, we weren't expected to get Jalen Ramsey, but Jalen Ramsey kind of fell into our lap. Same thing with Josh Allen. He kind of fell into our lap, especially after Daniel Jones was the selection at six. Really shocked a lot of people. And, you know, again, Josh Allen falling right into our laps. The guy's a terrific player. Probably, the, in my opinion, the first or second best overall player in this year's draft. So I cannot help but give this pick an A+. Though, you know, it doesn't necessarily give props to Dave Codwell because any GM in that situation at seven would have taken Josh Allen. And if you wouldn't have, you would have been silly. You would have been like Gettleman for the Giants. You know, you would have been silly out of your mind. I can't believe you didn't take Josh Allen. And that's, you know, you'd be a terrible GM. But Dave Codwell shows a little bit of competency and takes Josh Allen, again, the best player available and the guy that they needed to select uh, at the time. So overall, I'm going to be giving this pick an A+. Plus. There's nothing there's nothing to knock on it. There's nothing to knock on Josh Allen's game. There's nothing to knock on the other players that were available. This was just a straight up perfect pick in a perfect situation in a perfect world. And I cannot wait to see what Josh Allen does in Saxonville. Now let us discuss the second round pick. Uh, we talked about guys that we could have got in the second round, and we touched on him, and we talked about Jaywan Taylor, who ended up being the selection for the Jaguars in the second round, and another remnants of 2016 when the Jags were supposed to take Miles Jack, but a couple of injury rumors kind of had us not select him, and you know, everybody kind of passed on him, and he fell into the second round, we traded up, took Miles Jack, and this is the same situation here in 2019. Josh Allen falls into our laps. We were supposed to select Jaywan Taylor 7th overall, which a lot of us disagreed with, you know, even without the injuries. 
But, you know, he ended up falling in the second round. We traded up, and we took Jawan Taylor. Now, if this is something that you want to do is solidify this offensive line to give Nick Foles time and to open up holes for Leonard Fournette, this is a very, very smart pick, and I'm glad we traded up to do it because this guy is not a second-round talent. He's a first-round talent. He's just not top 10 in the first-round talent. You know what I mean? He's middle of the pack. He's definitely probably – he was the third, fourth best – offensive tackle in this year's draft and the fact that he just kept falling due to basically false injury rumors was incredible and the fact that the Jags made a play and it was a good trade by Caldwell too so Caldwell managed to get a really solid trade out of this pick as well to take Jaywan Taylor and to make sure that this is going to be the guy protecting Nick Foles be our right tackle so drafting two guys in back-to-back -back rounds that are going to be starters right off the bat is a terrific, terrific move by Dave Caldwell and a terrific move by this organization as a whole. I cannot tell you how good this these first two rounds were, especially if they end up hitting, which I'm almost guaranteeing they will hit. It's almost on par with 2016 is what I'm saying, so... I give this pick an A plus as well. Nothing else we should have done. You know, there was there was DK Metcalf on the board, and I completely understand there's some, you know, there's some people that talk about how we haven't taken a wide receiver and we didn't, you know, draft one. You know, the the team is very confident with the wide receivers that they have, and I think that if they weren't and they didn't think that these guys could play to Nick Foles' strengths, they would have done that. But they obviously have a lot of faith in these guys, and I think with a competent quarterback, these wide receivers can ball and be terrific. Marquise Lee, D.D. Westbrook, uh, D.J. Chark, all three of these guys, Chris Conley as well. You know, this is a decent wide receiver core, and I get that there's not really an explosive number one guy, but, you know, with the upside that all these guys have shown, I am sure that they are going to perform really really well so I'd have no problem taking right tackle here especially because it was Jaywan Taylor a guy who has a first round grade on him getting two guys with first round grades and back-to-back -back rounds and back-to-back -back A plus selections from Treeb from Treeb Talks. Now let us touch on our first third round pick tight end Josh Oliver out of San Jose State. Now this was a tight end I wasn't familiar with and I was kind of shocked I was a little shocked that the Jags uh took Josh Oliver with the 69th overall selection you know Josh Scobie killed it on the podium it was hilarious by the way but this guy has playmaking ability uh he's not necessarily the perfect size for a tight end that we're looking for and his run blocking definitely could use some development you know he's not a finished product and we kind of knew if we weren't going to be taking a tight end the first round we were going to get a guy that we had to develop we had to fix and I think that is fine especially because I think he's a great receiving threat he's really good vertical down the field he's good inside as well you know his route running uh, is not in question, and his big playability is not in question either. I think that he's a good receiving tight end, and I think he's going to fill that void uh, well. I think he's going to do well doing that. But I would have rather taken Dawson Knox because Dawson Knox has better uh, play. He doesn't have better playmaking ability. I think they're on par, but he definitely is a better uh, run supporter, whereas Josh Oliver is not a terrific run supporter. So, you know, I don't see him starting week one. I don't see that I see Jeff Swaim and you know I don't even maybe he'll get some time in the rotation you know I would hope so but I think they're gonna try and bring him along easy and we're not gonna see a lot of Josh Oliver until about maybe week five week six of the season to kind of kind of bring him into the system you know you're gonna see a lot of Jeff Swaim Ben Quayak James O'Shaughnessy's I don't think you're gonna see a lot of Josh Oliver's to start uh, the season. So overall, I'm going to give this pick a C plus. I think it could have been better because I think there was better tight ends on the board and maybe even some better players, a position of need on the board. You know, people were upset we didn't take, you know, DK or Hakeem Butler, none of those guys. You know, we decided to take kind of a subpar tight end here, but it was a position of need and they needed to draft a tight end and they didn't do it with Irv Smith Jr. in the second round. So getting Josh Oliver, uh, in the third round's not necessarily a bad pick. I just wish if we were going to address it, you know, we should have done it sooner. But the situation that the Jags were, were given with two great sec first and second round picks, you know, you can't necessarily expect them to hit on the third round as well. Again, I don't think we'll see a lot of Josh Oliver to start the season, but hopefully he's going to be brought along and he's going to be very good at his job. Now, coming up next, our second, third-round selection, linebacker Quincy Williams. This one was a head-scratcher out of Murray State. Uh, he wasn't on anybody's big boards. You know, he wasn't 
he wasn't heard of really in this year's draft. You know, not no one had him in his you know in their top three hundred. I seen some guys say he wasn't even in their top seven hundred and fifty. So you know the the. The idea of drafting this guy in the third round, but there were reports that other teams showed interest in Quincy and that they would have, you know, tried to make a move for him maybe in the fourth, fifth round. But I don't think anyone was reaching this high in the third round. But, you know, if the Jags really fell in love with him and they really like what this kid has to offer, I understand why they spent a third round pick on him. But, you know, like we say, he wasn't necessarily a highly touted player out of college. And you know sometimes those guys end up getting those guys end up working out, but more often than not those guys are you know undrafted sixth rounders, seventh rounders. You know maybe not as high as a third rounder, but I watched some of his highlights, which is also funny because if you if you look up on YouTube Quincy Williams highlights, there's only one person that has Quincy Williams highlights, and it is him. It is him. It is Quincy Williams. <laughs> Quincy Williams uploaded his own highlight reel to YouTube, and that's the only highlights you can find of him, at least on YouTube. You know what I mean? So. Uh, he's a thumper, you know, he hits hard, he's a hard-hitting linebacker, and, you know, they're, they're looking for a guy to replace Telvin Smith, maybe. You know, there's some rumors going around that Telvin Smith might not be coming back, he didn't go to voluntary workouts, him and the team aren't talking, you know, and it's, it's a weird situation, it's very, very strange, so... You know, drafting Quincy Williams in that sense kind of makes sense, but you would think you would take a guy that's at least maybe on people's big boards, like a guy like Caden Ellis, you know, maybe. But, you know, Quincy Williams, I'm not going to hate on the pick too much because, like I said, I've seen the highlights. He looks like a pretty solid player, but the fact that he wasn't on a lot of people's big boards kind of bugs me a little bit. So I'm going to give this another C-plus grade. Again, we don't know a lot about Quincy, and we don't know what he brings to the table just yet. So I'm not going to hate on the pick too much. Let's just hope it works out for the best for the Jags and for Quincy Williams. Next up in the fifth round, the Jaguars selected running back Raquel Art. Raquel Armstead, Raquel Armstead, I'm sorry, I didn't want to say it wrong, and I probably already did, but uh, he's a running back at a temple, and he has really solid stats, and you know, he's a speedster, he's a good catching back as well, I could see him contributing a lot in special teams, as far as maybe kick returns, and punt returns, if we don't want, you know, D.D. Westbrook or D.J. Shark getting hurt back there, because you know, they're both going to be playing bigger roles this year at the wide receiver position, so drafting him to fill that void is completely okay with me, and it's also okay with me the fact that he's probably going to be filling the Corey Grant role, you know, the small guy that runs all the fake punts, and you know, that is the speed running back, you know, that Corey Grant was, and Corey Grant is still a free agent, by the way, which I am just appalled by and shocked by, bring that man home, I love Corey Grant, and you know, I hope I love Raquel, Raquel Armstead as well, because like I said, he has a lot of Corey Grant in him, and I think this was a solid pick. You know, I would like to have seen the Jags maybe use this fifth round pick at a wide receiver position. But, you know, that's to going off of who's on the board, who's the best available. You know, so we didn't, you know, I understand. I completely get it. But, you know, the Jags have made a lot of effort to try to fill the running back room through free agency. So this might not, this might be a guy that doesn't even end up making the team. But, again, let's hope he does, especially if we're going to use him to kind of fill the kick return, punt return role. Uh, the Corey Grant role as a whole. I'm going to be giving this a B plus grade. I think it's a uh, it's a huge upside. Like it could play out to be really really good, but you know the the floor is he either gets cut or you know he doesn't get a lot of playing time. I don't see this guy fucking up and making this a bad pick. I just see you know the Jags not playing him or cutting him that would prevent this pick from being any better. So I'm going to give it a solid B. I think it was an all right pick, and, you know, the Jags do need kind of a running back like that, especially if we're going to be kind of running some similar stuff that uh, Phil Lupo did in Minnesota or what he did in uh, Philadelphia as well. So I think that he's going to fit the system well, and I think this was an all right, pretty solid pickup. Round six, quarterback Gardner freaking Minshew, guys. I, oh my god, this was the most hyped I was for any pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. Honestly, the sixth round pick made me so, so happy. I've seen Gardner Minshew play in person. He's a great guy. His personality 
fits so well with Jacksonville. You know, with Blake Bortles gone and the fact we don't have a lovable quarterback that has that personality, you know, Gardner Minshew is going to fill that great. And he's going to beat Cody Kessler out to be the backup quarterback. And then hopefully it's going to be like a Seattle situation for when they drafted Matt Flynn. I mean, when they signed Matt Flynn and drafted Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson ended up edging out Matt Flynn in training camp. You know, that's what's going to happen here. Gardner Minshew and his terrific mustache, the handsome man, is going to beat out Nick Foles and end up being the starter. That's just what's going to happen. No, but in all reality, Gardner Minshew is a very, very solid pick here in the sixth round and a very solid pick to be the backup to Nick Foles. And everybody in the Jacksonville community is kind of gathering around him and already really, really liking him and what he has to offer. You know, not only is his personality great, but his play on the field is great also. He was a Finished fifth overall in the Heisman voting. He was the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. He won every. He won so many awards. Gardner Minshew did in college, and he's a great quarterback, and he has a great story as well. You know, he went the JUCO route. You know, he went to multiple colleges, and he had to step on the field, be the guy, and, you know, lead them to good seasons, and he did that with every team he played for. You know, in Washington State, they faced an unfortunate circumstance where their original starting quarterback, who was going to be for the 2018 season, ended up killing himself. It was killing himself. It was really, really unfortunate. Gardner Minshew came in and handled the situation well with class and did terrific. He threw over 4,000 yards, 38 touchdown passes, 7 interceptions. This guy is decisive. He makes great decisions. His, he's not mobile, so you know he's more of a pocket passer. He kind of struggles on the deep ball just a little bit, but once he's decisive and he can throw those short to intermediate routes, I think he's... He was one of the best quarterbacks in the I mean in the uh, NCAA last year at doing that, and you know he brought 11 wins to a Washington State squad that was uh, struggling. You know prior to that, though they do always seem to put up good offensive stats. You know Gardner Minshew kind of took him to the promised land, got him that 11 win season. They were even discussed in the college football playoff at one time before, unfortunately losing to Washington, which Washington State does all the time. All the time. They always lose to Washington. That's just how it goes. So, you know, it cost him a trip to the Rose Bowl, which is really unfortunate. But uh, now I'm just rambling on about Washington State and their woes. I'm a big WSU fan. I'm a big Gardner Minshew fan. And I guarantee you, you guys will be too. I honestly think with how much love he's getting, he's going to be the highest rookie jersey sold for Jacksonville. I know that might be a hot take, but I could see it. I'm getting a Gardner Minshew jersey. I'm hella getting a Gardner Minshew jersey. I don't even care if he gets cut. I love him. I love him to death, and I will get a Gardner Minshew Jags jersey. The only thing that would ruin, that would make this even better, is if Gardner Minshew was number five. That would just be unreal, and it would be insane. It would be dope. It would be crazy. I'm going to be giving this pick an A minus, mostly because he's not going to be drafted to be the starter. Otherwise, this would get an A plus pick. But I think it was a very, very solid selection, and welcome to Duval, Gardner Minshew. You will fit right in. And finally, in the seventh round, the Jaguars selected Auburn defensive tackle Dontavious Russell. And it brings good depth to the defensive line. You know, uh, I think that he'll have an opportunity to participate to stay here. He is a seventh round draft pick, so we're not going to get too hyped on him. But again, it brings good depth to the team. And I think brings overall, it was a solid pick. You know, there wasn't really much to choose from in the seventh round. I'm not going to get too much into it. I don't really know him as a player. I don't know how well he did. So, I mean, if you're an Auburn fan and you know how well he did or how good he is, leave your opinion on him in the comment section down below. But as of right now, I'm going to be giving that a B. I think it was solid. I think as for addressing a need and some depth, it was a good pick. So Dontavious Russell getting a B pl getting a B from Treep. And finally, let's go over an overall grade for the Jaguars 2019 draft class. Now, I think Josh Allen was a home run, out of the park home run. That was a terrific pick. Jawan Taylor, I also think that was a perfect pick. Terrific, terrific, terrific. The running back pick I was a fan of. Gardner Minshew I was a fan of. I wasn't a big fan on the third round selections. I think our third round picks could have been better. But I think once we hit the fifth through seventh and our first through second, those were really good picks. So I'm not going to let the two third round kind of duds. I want. I don't want to say duds because I think they could end up being good players. We just got to give them some time to develop, you know, like... Everybody needs in the NFL, but 
As of now, I am not going to say that those were home run picks or even really big hits. So overall, I'm going to be giving this draft class a solid B+. I'm going to be giving this draft class a solid B+. Because of those two picks and the fifth and the seventh round picks, you know, those are good pickups with Gardner Minshew and the running back and the defensive tackle I don't really know too much about. So, you know, I think B plus is fair. You know, it, it's not too optimistic giving it an A plus or an A minus. And, you know, it leaves open the door of me saying that, hey, some of these picks cannot, you know, pan out. But I'm, ha- I'm coming into the season with very high optimism that a lot of these guys end up balling out in the preseason and hopefully ball out in the regular season as well and earn themselves some starting jobs at Gardner Minshew. I hope... I hope you just beat Nick Foles out for that job because I freaking love you so much. Uh, you know, so overall, a B-plus grade for the Jaguars 2019 mock draft from me. What would you guys grade the Jaguars 2019 mock draft? Leave it in the comment section down below, and let's have a fair discussion. And that was me grading the Jaguars 2019 draft class. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you want to pick up some Troop, Tur- Troop Talks merchandise, you can go over to uh, teespring.com forward slash store forward slash Troop Talks. And also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them to just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.